Hello, my friends. Welcome back. This is Dr. Mohammed Nizami again with another lecture on RF and microwave devices. In the last two videos, which you can refer back if you haven't watched those in my playlist regarding the design of RF to RF crossover um, devices, design, design of these devices, please refer back, go back and watch these two, uh, those two videos and then come back here. But uh, essentially what we did, we introduced the principle and theory of an RF crossover for high density uh, RF boards that are used in modern applications such as 5G and 6G and um, re uh, vehicle radars, uh, SATCOM terminals and SATCOM transponders. And we have shown how we use the six layer board with Rogers material and Rogers prepreg the 4350 and the uh, 4450, how we constructed a, um, a stack layer of which we were able to do design a, uh, an RF crossover, which is this one here, basically where we had one signal comes in um, and another one comes on this side and they are crossing each other. The one on, one on top with microstrip uh, transmission line. The other one uses both combination of both a microstrip transition uh, transmission line with a transition via to strip line and then back again transitioning to the top uh, to a microstrip line. Then we said this was really good design. We could operate all the way up to 33 gigahertz or so. Then we said, okay, um, Usually we design this, and let me just take the uh, air cavity out of this so we can see it clearer. Uh, so this is fine. This is designed in an embedded application, okay, where we, this is in the board. So usually an out of microwave designer, he, he or she would come in and come up with this device early on in the game of the, the um, circuit board design, hand it over to the uh, handover as a DXF file or as a solid model or as a Gerber file to the BCB designer and the BCB designer the, or the schematic uh, uh, designer as well. And you could use this over and over in the uh, design. You make a symbol out of it with a footprint and you just use it anywhere on the board where you would need to do a crossover of two signals. We said, then we said, okay, today we said, okay, this is fine if you're embedding this into the design early on in the game. But then we said, okay, I said, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can design one of these devices as a standalone package it as a standalone product, okay? So, and this is basically what I did today. This is the design that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, so we've got the, the uh, this is the bottom side with the input output pads in there. And I did them as a semicircles or half via. And then I did grounds as well on the sides. And these are, they can be used also for my, uh, my assembly guidance. And then we've got a bunch of ground vias in here, just to uh, common the ground layers. And then we have one microstrip going in here and then another one here. And of course, between them, there is a, a strip line. Um, okay, that, that is there. So uh, as you can see here, there's a strip line in there. Okay. And so let's look at this in details. So again, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dr. Mohammed Nizami, and I'm a Maraf microwave design consultant. Um, I do independent contracts for small projects for companies that like to do um, that can uh, work with uh, uh, offloading, um, offshore, uh, remote designers. I, I'm at your service in that sense. You can 
reach out to me with this phone number in here or using these uh, Android Telegram uh, or, or the Telegram and WhatsApp apps on, on your phone. Or you could email me on this email, okay? So let's go on. By the way, before we go on, I just wanted to uh, also bring another thing to your attention. Some of the some of you guys that watch me uh, contacted me and they want to be able, they said, why don't you show us how you constructed these things? Well, when we uh, construct something uh, like this, when I do something like this, ladies and gentlemen, it takes lots of hours to construct these, okay? This is not simple. And uh, for me to record all the steps and to make videos on that, that's not really what I'm trying to do here, okay? Uh, I'm assuming that you already know how to draw things in HFSS or CT CST or, or FICO or whatever, AWR. Uh, and and then you're just coming in I'm a, as 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 a somebody who is interested in uh, in seeing uh, discussing the concept of the device model and design. Okay. Now, if you want to learn how to draw and construct these uh, uh, the, these devices, I would suggest that you come to my training. Okay, that's one option, and that's this right here. Okay. If you come to my training, then there, all of these devices that I discussed in this playlist and in the 30 or so videos that you see on my channel, all of those, you will sit down and learn them from zero up, okay? I, I'm going to, uh, I would assume that you have your um, HFSS Sciences package installed on your computer, and we, I sit down with you. And I work from zero up with you, okay, on this. Uh, so I, I assume that you already know HFSS, but not to the point where uh, you, we can go ahead and construct this. But for me to sit down and make videos on how you do these things in HFSS, that's not really the purpose of these sessions, okay? So go and 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 try to uh, come up to speed and in, in the uh, knowing how to use the uh, CAD system from ANSYS websites or go uh, have a training, um, um, an introduction training, uh, an early training, and then come to my classes uh, or my presentations. My presentations are solely on the design and modeling of the device itself from an RF and microwave theory point of view, the physics. And I'm not here presenting the tools. The tools, you can go to the um, the company that owns these tools, they have trainings and, and there are other third party um, um, individual companies that specialize in training. If you want me to train you from zero up, I, I, I welcome that. Email me if you have at least five people, I will sit down and, and I will come to your site and, and do the training. But there are people that do that and specialize in that. So anyway, one of the... Uh, my training um, uh, that I that I hold in Jarash Jordan in here right now is a three day training, okay. And the cost per person is here. And like I said before, this we all the devices that I have discussed so far, including the one today. You come in, you have the source files that I will give you, okay. And then I sit down with you and we go through from in details on how to construct these. And then how to understand the physics in RF and uh, the theory of operation. Okay, so watch these videos if you're interested in that. Let me know. I also can come to your company if you have at least five people. Okay, uh, I would travel to you whether it be in uh, North America, Europe, Middle East, uh, wherever. Okay, so let's get back to our concept. In the last two videos, we were talking about how you would design an RF crossover, RF to RF crossover, where you have two signals basically, and the you get to a point on the board uh, layout where you have to cross over the signal. There is no way around it. You can't take additional path to come around. You would have to go all the way large distances on the board. In that case, the only option is to go into what we call RF crossover. And then if that happens, then you usually have two options. 
you either design your own crossover, okay, with um, and embed that design in the board, make uh, then create a symbol for it, and then reuse it over and over with the layout. Or you can come in and purchase one of these devices, one of these chips, like these two different companies that they make this. And this chip here, like this one, for instance, uh, is five by five mil, uh, millimeters, okay? Or 200 mils by 200 mils, okay? And the one I'm gonna show you today, my own design, is uh, my own packaged design is actually six by three mils, okay? So it's just slightly, um, one, uh, I mean, millimeter, sorry, f uh, six millimeters by three millimeters. It's slightly one millimeter longer, but in the long side, in the, the width is short, is smaller, is narrower. It's not five millimeters like in this case, it's really three millimeters. Okay, so uh, this is an, the same uh, chip here from another company that we, uh, that ha we have discussed last time. Okay, so if we design, decide to design the 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 uh, the crossover using via transitions in, uh, and embed the design in the uh, board, not use external uh, off-the-shelf uh, cross uh, chip like the ones I've shown, and then what we will do is we will uh, we went ahead and designed that in the last video. And the video previously, which built upon to get to the previous video, uh, basically what we did back then is we said, okay, here is the stack layer that I was working with. This is six layer board, okay, with Rogers 4350B as a core in there, okay, and then the uh, the uh, the uh, 4450 as a pre prepreg, okay, and then so we have. One, two, three, four, five, six layers of conductor in here. Each one of those is 35 micron uh, uh, thick, okay? And we decided, okay, let's not use buried vias and blind vias because those are expensive. Um, so we're gonna use back drilling, which it means we will use a single via for the board that connects from top to bottom and then chop the, the um, chop the uh, additional unused um, length of the via once we transition between the third layer, which is basically where we decided to put our strip lines. And of course, the, the layer two and layer five, these are ground layers because they have to be referenced for the top and for the bottom to implement micro strip lines. And we have shown the importance of why we had to do back drilling because it's open stub in here, open stub at millimeter frequencies or at high frequencies, they become notorious because they you'll get a point where that additional, that little open stub will become a quarter wavelength, a quarter wavelength physically. And then in that case, it's open-ended. So it's really, it's gonna be shorted. It looks short at the uh, transition to the strip line and short that means uh, you basically know the signal completely. So last time we ended up with this design in here where we had a micro strip and then a via transition to a strip layer, which is L3, layer three. And then we have another via transition to the top. And then we inserted four ground vias just to come on the, the additional layers that we decided their ground. And then we have a crossover line of macro strip line in here. Of course, this line, this line, and this line, they're all the same widths because they, they are laid out on top. And then, uh, so let's get back to that design. That design is this design in here, as you can see. So we have, what we have is in the, uh, so we have a, uh, this is a, a strip line coming in here and a, Micro strip that interconnects them, okay? And then we had two uh, v back drilled vias, as you can see here, we uh, drill, back drilled them with a bit that is not, it, the diameter was only as good, uh, as, as, as wide as the, uh, uh, the diameter of the, uh, of the via itself, but we lift out the rings, the metal rings, 
And in that case, they said, okay, that's fine because we don't want to make a very wide uh, hole. We, we just want to make a hole that will take out enough of the additionally stop in here and leave out just a little bit, tiny bit, so that we don't get close to the strip line, okay? And of course, we had the macro strip on top, the other one, which crosses this over, and the performance um, that we had, basically just to show you here, that the uh, performance was uh, simply very good. Uh, so we had one half was all the way to around, let's see, uh, this is a uh, marker 21, which is at 32 gigahertz, okay, with, with return loss better than uh, 10 dB in that case. We had a little area that is worse than 10 dB, but so uh, that's what we have, okay? And then the other path basically was really good. Um, the isolation was great. The worst case was minus 35 dB. And we did show the electromagnetic field, of course, in that case, how it behaves. And we also animated this just to show you physically how the uh, E-field propagates. And I believe, okay, this is at 10 gigahertz here, so. Okay, so you can see at 10 gigahertz how the signal behaves. Okay, let's show it as a, on the, so we've got signal comes in here and then goes down and then goes up and goes to the other side while the other one also, the signal goes straight and there's little, you know, more than, better than 30 dB of isolation between them, okay? So this would be nice to, as a nice design. So you take this in and incorporate it into your six layer board and reuse it anywhere you um, need to, okay? So it's a pretty good design. So <clears throat> now let's, let's go ahead and go and uh, say, okay, so we've done this, we've done this and you can look at the, uh, these are the results, I kept them in here. So let's, um, so for the fun of it, let's try and, and, and we're gonna take the same design and package it like these guys, okay? Uh, professionally done so you can actually make um, your own do, uh, chip out of it or you might wanna give it to some company as a consultant. Like in this case, if you're interested in this transition, let me know, I, I could provide you with the Gerber file with the DXF file of the design. I will provide you the uh, 3D, uh, 3D model using ANSYS HFSS if you're interested. So, um, and it's it, we are using exactly the same stack layer, okay? We could reduce the height with, uh, since uh, some of the layers are not used in this case, but I prefer to just keep it for right now there. I could. If anybody is interested in this, I could do further work to reduce the size so it's only a three layer board. Um, okay, so what we have, we have the top side in here. So we have still have the two micro strip lines with VS transitions to the uh, layer three, which has the strip lines. And then we have one, which is a crossover. And what I did in this case, because we wanted this as a surface mount device, so I designed in the input and output port like this way here, where you have like a half donut for every one of them, where the signal comes in, uh, you basically provide the trace in here, okay, and then the trace solders to here, and of course the RF uh, signal will go up, up here, and then travel cross over. And the other side, it will come here and, and go down and cross over, okay? And this is the E-field, how it looked like. And this this, this device is, again, like I, I just said in the beginning, it's so tiny, it's only six, six millimeter by three millimeters, okay? So you can, uh, that's just 
comparable to the um, commercial devices, uh, crossover devices that are available nowadays. The response for, between port one and two, which is that's where the, the via transitions are happening. There's two transitions. You can see it in here. It doesn't roll off until you get to M14, which is at 16 gigahertz. So it has a, a very nice um, return loss all the way to uh, 16 gigahertz. And the return loss is better than, in that case, is, is better than uh, 10 dB most of the times, okay? The other port, of course, is also great. That's the three to four ports, which is basically, that's the, uh, the, the microstrip crossover line. And that one, of course, it's so tiny that it, it doesn't have any losses. It's only three millimeter well, uh, length, uh, long. So it's, you can hardly, there are hardly any uh, losses in there and it's straight flat all the way through to more than um, 22 gigahertz. And the return loss, of course, is better than 10 dB most of the times. Isolation is good between these two po uh, four ports. It's better than 37 dB on most of the frequencies, okay? So let's go back to um, HFSS and view that design. So we're gonna close this one here. Okay, and then go back here. So this is the design. And uh, let's just uh, discuss this. Um, so what we have, as you can see in here, we have the, um, the macro strip line in here. Okay, that's the uh, crossover. And then we have the, uh, the uh, other one, the, con oh, the connecting line. So the, these are the, oops, I apologize. So let's go again. Okay. That's these guys. And we have, uh, okay. So let's rotate. Okay, so this is what we have right now. So you can see it clearly. And then we have the vias the connecting vias, okay, uh, that are here, okay? And again, they are back drilled, so the the open stop doesn't, is not connected, okay? We still have the rings, but those are irrelevant. In this case, it doesn't affect the RF propagation, okay? And then we have a whole bunch of, uh, a number of ground vias uh, that are connected for uh, to common the uh, the ground on top and the bottom, okay. And of course the input and output because that's the difficult part, which is the part that that degraded the performance from. As you can see, the performance of this is is almost like half of the frequency width that we dealt with in the um, embedded design for the board, and that's due to the fact that we are bringing in the signals, the signals comes in here through, through solid pads and they have to travel up on top, okay? Like this one here has to travel up on top to reach to uh, the lines. And that of course has a lot of, um, a lot of th that has um, non-negligible uh, loss and, and, and delays. And so uh, that's where there are and a lot of parasitics in this case. The ground is, is maintained by, of course, these here, these pads that brings the ground on top, and then the these ones in here. Now, uh, of course, this design uh, is not really final. We can't really send it to a uh, uh, fabrication yet. We still need um, a manufacturing engineer to look at this or the BCB house to, like for instance, uh, we still need for the uh, ground pads, we still need to have some thermal relief on there. And we still need to make sure that um, the gap between the pad and the bottom ground is sufficient so that the solder does not fill it and get um, shorts, okay? Now I still have the, uh, the back drilling hole is here, it doesn't matter. That, that one, anyway, it doesn't affect the signal. 
Yeah, so let's look at the uh, performance of this. As you can see, it's pretty good performance. That's for the, um, that's the, uh, the one to two, okay? And let's go back and just see which one is one to two in this case. Uh, let's see, this is the uh, citations, one, and then excitation two is here. That's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. The excitation on of the signal in here is not really, um, this is not a wave port anymore. I used lumped ports and uh, for those of you that that uh, use uh, these modeling tools, uh, this is more appropriate when you have a feed that is like this one here, where you have a, a single pad, a small tiny pad that is used as an input out. Okay, the isolation on, on is pretty good, better than thirty seven dB across through the whole band all the way to. Um, uh, 21 gigahertz. Let's look at the E field on this. So uh, this is the E field and let's animate it. Okay, so basically uh, it's pretty good. Um, let's just make sure, okay. Let's animate this and show you how it works in 3D. Okay, should be coming soon. All right, here we go. So let's look at this sideways first. You can see how the signal is is getting fed in the bottom for one one of the crossover lines. You fed here, it goes up through the vertical um, tab or the vertical feed to the uh, to the microstrip line, then it goes down into the via, transition down to the strip line layer, okay, which is here, and then goes over the other side, the other way around. It goes through a via to the top, to microstrip line, goes down again to the bottom pads, okay? These are the bottom pads. Now, likewise, for the other side, okay, we have the signal that is fed in here, in the bottom, okay, it's fed, it's fed in here, Go, climbs up the, um, the uh, feed pad to the top, to the micro strip line, goes across over, okay, without any interference with the other path. Okay, as you can see here, it's almost acting like as if a bridge, okay, and it is, that's what it is. It's a bridge, physical bridge, for the signal to the other side and it feeds back down, okay? So this is very good right now. So let's look at it from different sides. So we've seen it from here. That's a side, okay? This is the three to four ports. Okay, so the sides and this one goes that way into the page. Okay, so, um, so this is, um, uh, you really have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go again and just show the the construction of this. So let's start hiding. Okay, so we've got the uh, that's the uh, ground for the uh, the second layer ground. Okay, so now the third layer. Okay. Okay, oh, that's a clearance, that's okay. Three pegs, last one. Okay, well, that was the one before the last one, so. And then, so this is what we, this is the metal work that we have. So we have the pads, basically, this is the input pad, comes in here, on this side, goes over here, and there is the, um, the V is in here. Let me take out the, uh, Okay, let's hide this one and we got 
All right, that one. So uh, that's okay. So and yeah, let's me the other thing. This should be that way is easier to see. And same thing. We will do this here. So we're gonna hide this and hide the uh, this one. Well, this one. Let's make it to zero. So we can see the metal work. Okay. So this is what we have again. So you can see the one side, the feed, the signal comes in here from the bottom through soldering, okay? Goes over here. And then this is the via that takes down, the, that transitions down to the strip line. This is the strip line over here, this one here. Okay, there's underneath this one. Okay, it goes over to the other side and that's where you have the other VN here with back drilled, okay, and then goes over into this other feed. The other feed that crosses over is very simple bridge, okay, which is just basically from here all the way to here. Now these ones, this one, this one, this one, and that one, these are all ground, plus the other one is the grounds that is on the, the, the uh, these are the uh, filled, Vs that commonize all the uh, all the metal work together. Okay, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, wraps up the uh, my uh, three videos on the design of um, a, a, a crossover a RF to RF crossover. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from it. Uh, I hope you can utilize it. If you need, if you have any questions, please um, don't hesitate to contact me again. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, this is Dr. Mohammed Nazami. I wish you a great day. Thank you very much or a great night. Thank you, wherever you are.